Authorities are trying to prevent drunk driving deaths ahead of the holiday weekend. You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Bufa. 60 grand is helping fund police patrols this Memorial Day weekend. And Steve Langford breaks down those numbers. So we're going to be able to put extra extra patrols on the streets during holiday weekends, such as this week and Memorial Day week, weekend, July 4th, Labor Day. It's going to it's going to pay for overtime to get extra DUI patrols out in the street. So let's see a $60,000 grant divided by 100 days in the summer equals $600 a day. But how much is $60,000 going to accomplish over the summer? So last year we were able to, uh, the $30,000 that we received last year was able to uh, put two offices out uh, Friday and Saturday night for the entire summer. It is an enormous challenge for law enforcement, some of whom have suffered personally from heedless drivers. On a personal note, my father was killed by a, a drunk driver here in Long Beach back in 1990. Um, so it, it just strikes close to home. Brendan Finn, a retired city detective whose late father was a city cop, says the goal of appeals not to drink or take drugs and drive isn't to make arrests as much as it is to prevent funerals. Steve Langford for Newsday TV. Now, police were seen hauling boxes and boxes of evidence out of the suspected Gilgo Beach killer's home. Here's an aerial view of the search for you. Now, investigators were taking evidence out of Rex Huerman's basement. You can see it there. Now, they took out tables, a filing cabinet, and cleaning supplies. The Suffolk DA has not said what brought police back to the First Avenue house. The six-year-old's home was first searched after his arrest in July. Now, the architect is charged in the killings of four women whose remains were found near Gilgo Beach more than 13 years ago. To read the latest on this investigation, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, below the Newsday TV video box. And only in Newsday, healthcare providers are blaming a nationwide hack for problems with its healthcare benefits plan. Northwell Direct is used by Northwell employees and their families. Doctors, therapists, and other providers say they've had billing problems and delayed payments because of this issue. And all eyes on the Rangers as they take on the Panthers in the Eastern Conference Final. Jimmy Stewart explains what they expect on the ice. Next season over, the New York playoff spotlight shines solely on the Rangers. Eastern Conference Finals begin this week. The Rangers with home ice advantage against the Florida Panthers. Panthers took two of three from the Blue Shirts in the regular season, and they reached the Cup Final last year. The Rangers are riding the red-hot goaltending of Igor Shosturkin and fantastic special teams. Their power play ranks third among playoff teams. Their penalty kill second. But what about when it's five-on-five five hockey? They've only outscored their opponents 19-8 to eight and have been outshot by more than 50. We asked Newsday's Colin Stevenson if that's cause for concern. One of the big uh, problems that analytics people have with the Rangers is that they're not great at five-on-five five hockey, and they they rely heavily on their power play, uh, and that's always a constant question: uh, can they can they win games uh, with just their power play? Well, they won a series against Carolina that they weren't supposed to win, and their power play figured a lot into it. So, I think that yes, uh, they certainly can win this uh, on the strength of their power play, but they're probably more likely are going to have to step it up in five on five situations. This is the first postseason matchup between the clubs since 1997. To read more about the Rangers quest for the Stanley Cup, click get more below the Newsday TV video box on our homepage. And the Jets had their second OTA practice today and Aaron Rodgers says the heat is on this season. Yeah, I feel really good. It's just about uh, the mental part. Just I think these practices have been nice the last couple of days. It's just feel what it's like to be out there, to be moving around and not be thinking about it and see how I respond the next day. Now the Jets take on the San Francisco 49ers on the West Coast September 9th. Rodgers will return to the field for this game. It's his first since he tore his Achilles in last season's Monday night opener.
Only in Newsday, Suffolk County paid out nearly 30 million bucks to settle lawsuits. Macy Eglin looks at what's behind the increase. For the year 2023, Suffolk County will pay out more than $29 million to settle lawsuits and legal claims compared to the year before when it spent about $7.7 .7 million, a massive increase discovered in documents obtained by Newsday. There were six settlements in 2023 of more than a million dollars. In any given year, a single large settlement could skew those figures. The largest settlement last year cost $5 million. In 2014, an eight-year-old boy and his cousin were struck by a Suffolk police cruiser that had been hit by another car, propelling it into the sidewalk. The family's attorney declined to comment. The second highest, $3.85 million, paid to Sean Lawrence. His second-degree murder conviction was vacated in 2018 after he already served six years. His attorney also declined to comment. So where is the money for these settlements coming from? According to the county, they're digging into reserve funds for the payouts, and experts say there's likely a strategy behind aggressively settling these cases. If they can clear the books, resolve these cases as best they can, that could increase the county's bond rating, which uh, lowers borrowing costs. And Romaine has said that's a big priority for his administration. And an even more expensive year ahead. For 2024, we've already seen two settlements for over $10 million each, paid for by the reserve fund and insurance. So we're already north of um, $30 million for 2024. The county is still facing several other large claims, including a $198 million lawsuit over the use of sewer funds. Reporting for Newsday TV, I'm Macy Egland. Now to read more about this story, go to Newsday.com, click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. And a growing number of Long Island boutiques have cafes inside. Lisa DeStefano checks some of them out and some of the story you'll see only in Newsday. It's sip and shop in the Seaside Store. Sea City Vintage in Atlantic Beach is owned by husband-wife duo Tom and Cassie Justice. Thank you. <laughs> they're either coming for vintage or they're coming for coffee. So if they come for coffee, they'll walk in, they'll grab their coffee, and then usually they'll look around. Um, or on the flip side, if they come in for vintage, they'll be like, oh, you did have coffee too. So that's been kind of a nice little compliment is everybody kind of comes in and gets something. They also serve tea and cold brew along with a selection of artisan toasts and pastries. One of the things that makes us special is we collect collections. These are great for somebody that has that coastal grandmother aesthetic. <laughs> so this is a totally different nautical vibe. One of our best sellers are our old salties. We get new things almost daily. Everything we sell has a story. Everything is secondhand. We focus on um, mostly 50s, 60s, and 70s for the shop, but we go as late as 90s for clothing. Wait, 90s is vintage? It is vintage. Anything over 20 so years old. old. Yes, you are vintage, my friends. You are vintage. <laughs> Back in Time is a very unique store. It's uh, an experience more than just shopping. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. see this. We have old stuff, new stuff, repurposed stuff. So this is one of our repurposed pieces. It's a uh, antique piano, which we turned into a, a bar. There are so many fun finds inside of Laura Napolitano's vintage home decor store, including Elisa's Niece's Cafe, run by her daughter, Jenna Tomeo. Everything we make is baked here, all of our desserts. We have some bar stools in the cafe. We have a cottage outside that has extra seating. And then we have tons of outdoor space too. So you can stop, have a sweet, and refuel for some more shopping. Or grab a drink in their courtyard bar. There is still more shopping to do. And I want everything in here. Elisa DiStefano, Newsday TV. Who doesn't love coffee? Now, to read more about this story, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More, below the Newsday TV video box. 
Now let's take your look at your absolutely gorgeous Long Island weather. Were you outside today? Man, it was wonderful out there. You can see tonight we're in the mid 50s and tomorrow we're near 70s with mostly sunny skies. Let's take a close look at tomorrow. You can see those temps are just right with the sun peeking out. It's going to be a nice one. And the seven day forecast, well, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Now Saturday and Sunday is cleared out. Monday we do have some rain, but this has been shifting all week long. So we'll take a look at it again tomorrow. Long Island weather is brought to you by Fire Island Ferries. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us.